Hello everyone, my name is Paige and today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up and August TBR. July was super busy for me because for two and a half weeks I was traveling around Europe so we went to London obviously because I live here and then we took the train to Paris, went, flew to Florence and then went to Rome and it was just such an amazing experience but we were so busy that I didn't have any time to read. So that being said, I read eight books this month all pretty much in the span of almost one week because I was doing a lot of reading for the reading rush. I didn't make any videos for this just because I really didn't have time and I was just so consumed with reading. Let's jump into what I read this month and what I hope to read next month. The first book I read this month was called Viable Threat and this is by Julie Rowe. I gave this one three out of five stars it was a book that I just kind of randomly picked up on Kindle. I think it was free or something like that. I had just recently finished the little mini series Bodyguard on Netflix and oh my god it was so good. So I was like okay I need to read something else that is involving bodyguards and like that kind of story because I just fell in love with it and this one just kind of fell flat for me. Basically in this story there is biological terrorism going on and the doctor that's trying to find a cure and all this different stuff doing tests and everything needs a bodyguard and he is there to kind of protect her, obviously. The reason why I really didn't enjoy this as much as I thought I would was because they literally fell in love after like an hour of knowing each other and I was like okay this is just so unrealistic and I just didn't really like it. They also got almost blown up like literally four times and I was just like okay come on now like we're just stretching the possibilities here. But it was kind of a fun quick read so I did enjoy it for that aspect. The next book I read was The Wedding Party and this is by Jasmine Guillory. I think I'm saying that right. This is the third book in the Wedding Party series. I haven't read either of the first two and I really don't think you need to to know these characters but I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four out of five stars. Berkeley has been putting out a bunch of these new romance novels that aren't like that quintessential harlequin type romance and I just really loved it. The characters were smart. They were believable. I really enjoyed their conversations. It was funny. I just really enjoyed it. I'm actually interested in picking up the other books in this series now, so that's always a plus as well. The next book I read was The Complete Illustrated Guide to the Catholic Faith, and this was by Charles Phillips. And so something I just kind of randomly picked up at the British Library, and I read through it all in one sitting on one of those days in London where it was literally like 100 degrees here, and my place doesn't have air conditioning, so I needed to go somewhere that did, and I just kind of sat there for a few hours and basked in the air flow. I gave this one four out of five stars. I thought it was super informative, kind of rushed a little bit, but it kind of hit a lot of things that I wanted to learn about anyway, so this was awesome for me. The next book I read was Well Met, and this is by Jen DeLuca. This one actually comes out on September 3rd, and I gave this one four out of five stars. This is another Berkeley romance. I've been requesting a bunch of these on NetGalley and keep getting like immediately approved, which is really fun. I have a bunch that I want to read in August that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, just another fun adult romance that I really enjoyed. The main character, Emily, moves to a small town so that she can look after her sister and her niece and her niece is super excited about joining the Renaissance Fair but in order to do so Emily also has to join and she kind of is at odds with an English teacher at the high school who is also really into the Renaissance Fair and there's just tension and romance and I don't know I just really liked it I've never read a book that's kind of based around a Renaissance Fair I've never been to a Renaissance Fair so it was really fun to read about and then because I was clearly in a romancy mood I then read Prince Charming by Rachel Hawkins. I actually gave this one three out of five stars. I saw a lot of other people on Goodreads that kind of gave it the same rating. It was fun and it was a cute little romance but I just felt like the romance itself wasn't really there. I did listen to this one on audiobook and I sped through it super quickly so that was really fun. I really liked the reader and all of that so that wasn't the issue. It was just the story itself was just kind of Okay. I also didn't really like Daisy's sister who is going to become the future queen of Scotland and ugh, I just I felt like their relationship didn't really get resolved and I don't know there was a lot going on that I was like wait no there's still things that need to happen but then no the book is over I guess. Honestly I don't even remember the guy that Daisy falls in love with. I, I will literally have to look on my laptop right now to figure that out. Miles. Hmm. Then because I had heard so many good things about the next book which is Her Royal Highness and is also by Rachel Hawkins I decided to pick that one up right away too. But unfortunately I did also give this one three out of five stars. While I do appreciate a female female romance and I just love that aspect especially for a royalty kind of scheme. I love royalty books. They're so much fun. I just thought again the romance wasn't really there. It kind of fell flat for me and the characters were just kind of annoying sometimes. I didn't really like this one either. I think maybe I'm just not a fan of Rachel Hawkins's 
writing style because I've read books by her in the past and I didn't really enjoy them. Then the next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh my god, I loved this book. This was the only book this month that I gave five out of five stars and it was just so incredible. I literally sped through this maybe in like four hours total. I read it over the span of two days but that was just because I was like, okay, I have to go to sleep. But it was so, so good and I loved everything about it. I know everyone has pretty much read this book by now and has really talked about it so I'm not going to say that much but if you haven't read this oh my god please go check it out and I can't wait to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing. And then the last book I read this month was The Winner's Curse and this is by Marie Rutkowski. I hope I'm saying that right. I was wrong. I also gave this one five out of five stars and I really really enjoyed it. This is one that I've had sitting on my bookshelf back at home for ages and I've just never picked it up and I have no idea why because it was so damn good. Again another one that I listened to the audiobook for and I love the reader. Oh my god it was just so good. I could not stop listening to this audiobook. I'll talk about this more in next month's wrap up but I've already finished The Winner's Crime and I'm currently reading The Winner's Kiss and I just I don't want this series to end but I can't stop reading because I really want to figure out what's happening next so oh man it's so good. If you haven't read this series yet read it and I love the covers too. Remember back in the day when they had like changed the covers before the third book was gonna come out and there was all this like drama about it but these covers are so much better and I just love them. Okay so that was everything I read in July. Eight books I thought that was pretty good. Now let's talk about what I'm gonna read in August. As I've already mentioned I already finished one book. I'm currently reading like three other ones so I'm already on a roll for August and I would really like to actually read 30 books this month. I know that sounds kind of crazy and wild and I don't really think I'm going to be able to manage it, but I would like to try. August isn't going to be super busy for me just because the only things I need to do is finish up my dissertation, write one other paper for a reflection on the dissertation, and then I'm going to Germany at the end of the month with my boyfriend when he comes out here to London. But other than that, I'm not super busy. I say that, but it sounds like I am really busy. I don't know. But I do my most reading when I'm procrastinating pretty much. So I'm going to try to read as much as possible this month. I also just feel like I haven't been reading a lot like I used to in previous years. And I kind of want to like change that and get out of this like slumps of like, oh, I just want to watch Netflix. Like, no, there are so many good books that I still need to read and are on my bookshelves back home. So I'm just going to try to power through as much as I can this month. That being said, let's talk about some other books that I want to read specifically this month. I'm obviously not going to list all 30 because that's way too long and I haven't even decided really what I'm going to read, but here are some specifics I'd really like to get to. One of the books I'm currently reading is Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. I won this book um, here in the UK actually from the publisher and I'm more than halfway done so I'm pretty sure I'll finish this today or tomorrow and I'm very excited to see how it's gonna end. I also mentioned this a couple months ago but I would really like to read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I picked this one up from my local library here in London. I want to finally get to it and try it out if I DNF it, whatever it happens. Everyone's been talking about this so I really need to read it. I'm also currently reading on audiobook The Winner's Kiss as I mentioned and I'm almost halfway through this one so Definitely something I'll probably finish tomorrow. I'd also really like to read 10 by Dates by Ashley Elston. This is something I got approved for on NetGalley, and it looks like a really short and cute Christmassy romance book, so definitely need to put that on my TBR. These next two are also ones that I got approved for on NetGalley and also in that same romancy theme. The first one is Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher. Just something that I saw in the cover. It looks so cute and I just really want to read it so definitely going to try to get to that one this month. And then the other one is Faker by Sarah Smith. Again a lot of people have been talking about this and I really want to see if it's all like worth the hype and I want to read it before it comes out because my NetGalley score right now is awful. So hopefully I will get to that one as well. Other than that, to complete this 30 books goal for August, I'm going to try to read as many like full length novels as I can because I don't want to just read like three regular books and then like 20 graphic novels. That doesn't equal 30, but that's okay. So I want to read as much as I can. And that being said, I'm going to finish this video here so that I can go back to reading. Let me know if you guys read anything exciting this month or if you're going to read anything exciting for next month. As always, I love hearing from you. And if not, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Just as a train was coming. Boom. I'm a magician? No. So basically in the story, I don't even, oh no. Boo, boo, boo. Hi, people. Then the next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. No, I'm going to start that over. And it seems like it'll be a short, cute, Christmassy romance. There's a train. Damn it. I thought I could beat it.